what ChatGPT or any of the, the AI sources can do is to help you decide which aspect of that learning process can you, should you streamline so that you can spend your time and energy on the more meaningful or impactful you know, part of that learning experience. I think there are a lot of situations where, again, getting assistance and generating you know, content then can help ultimately get to a better you know, product. You're listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oates. This is our district talk segment where we interview district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday shine online. Now, let's get back to the interview. Hello, my name is Jeff Schuler. I'm superintendent of Wheaton Warrenville, District 200. Um, we're a school that is uh, directly west of Chicago, suburban uh, Chicago. We educate uh, about 12,000 students in 20 schools, including 13 elementary, four middle, and two high schools. Hi, John Puglisi here, superintendent of the Rio School District in Southern California. We've got nine schools in grades TK through eight. We have about uh, 5,000 students. Hi, my name is Doug Brubaker. I'm superintendent of schools in Texarkana Independent School District. We are in Texarkana, Texas, just across the state line from Arkansas. We have a district of about 7,000 students spread across 11 sites. How is your school district approaching ChatGPT? That is an evolving answer. Uh, I think probably how we would have answered that three, four, five months ago is probably different than you know, kind of how, where we get to even by, by the end of the year. I think one, trying to frame the conversation around um, where is that tool productive and how can it support, right, the, the learning experience, right? So uh, I, I think there are situations where getting assistance and how you generate content or how you generate uh, a, a, a script or piece of writing uh, like that's natural, right? Like simply trying to pretend like chat GPT doesn't exist, um, I, I think is, uh, it, it, it's kind of the wrong path. I think it's more a matter of reframing what can it help us with in a productive way and where do we still need for the student and effort, effort and energy to, uh, to go, right? The student still needs to understand What's the question that I'm trying to answer through this essay, through this assignment? You know, how do I, you know, do the, the true kind of analytic thinking around the answer that I need to get to and understand where perhaps a resource can help to fill in content that then I utilize, revise, right? Sort of uh, uh, pull together from, from multiple places. So um, I, I think the early conversations were probably more around you know, how do we put the, the kind of acceptable parameters? And, and I think we're trying to continue to re-guide the conversation toward where is it productive in the learning experience and how do we help teach and guide kids to focus on, on that, right? To find kind of good or bad. We like to be on the cutting edge of, of all new technologies and getting kids to learn and know about them. So we have a team of educators and director of technology, which will be incorporating these new tools um, into student use. I would say the other thing that the school district is currently doing is not much other than hearing some initial fear. And we'll be responding to that and we'll be listening to our teachers and our parents and to our students about their concerns and then adjusting as we move forward. But one thing we will always do that has, as we have done with um, virtual reality, augmented reality, coding, robotics, we will try to e engage students in making and doing and learning from those in as innovative ways as we possibly can like a lot of other school systems, we're grappling with it. And so it's a very powerful tool. I know that there were a lot of concerns when calculators first became uh, cost-effective for, for students to own. And then the idea of Google coming out. Um, some of those same concerns about Google we see with ChatGPT, the accuracy of it. Privacy is a significant issue too, uh, Josh, because the information that you feed in 
remains part of that system. You're, you're basically sharing it with, uh, that site. And so as we're shaping our thoughts about it, we think about full disclosure in using it and, and making sure that students are aware of the risks and the opportunities and building some, some guardrails around it. I don't, I think what we found with cell phones and, uh, computers and all kinds of different technology is that banning it really doesn't get us anywhere in terms of building in students a sense of the importance of responsible use. And so that's going to be the challenge, I think, in our school system and a lot of others is helping to, or is, is helping students to figure out how to use these powerful tools responsibly in a way that may hurt them later on down the road when we think about things like digital footprint and personal information. Are there any positive use cases that you've heard from students around ChatGPT? Yeah, um, so I, I, I think it's uh, it, it exactly um, probably what was in the latter part of that uh, that question. I think uh, that there are like there are stages to development of any you know piece of writing, any product, right? That you're gonna you're gonna create from the brainstorm to kind of the initial. Uh, product you develop to the refinement, right, of, uh, of that. I think what ChatGPT or any of the, the AI sources can do is to help you decide which aspect of that learning process can you, should you streamline so that you can spend your time and energy on the more meaningful or impactful, you know, part of that learning experience. I think there are a lot of situations where, again, getting assistance and generating, you know, content then can help ultimately get to a better, you know, product. If if you're using it in the brainstorm or you're using it in the the kind of idea creation again, whether you're an educator that is thinking about producing something that you can then refine for use with students, or you're a student who's, you know, developing a a, a product. I think if it creates additional space at times for deeper levels of analysis or thinking you know, or uh, kind of uh, revision or creation, I think that can, can be a good thing. I think these tools, as we approach the, the birth or the nascent development of any new tool, having students be involved, engaged, looking what it is, um, look, yeah, looking at the pros and cons and just breaking down what's happening now, that has been a very positive process that has just begun to, to start. So. Having the students and the parents inform the process, I've heard already um, some folks that are immediately, which which make my heart warm to say, hey, well, they're already thinking about how can we use this in things that already exist. We have a thing that was self-development. It's called School K. We invite schools at all levels, including high school, to come and the kids code and make video games and then they come together and they play it and they have awards and we bring in the industry. And those things are, that's just a vehicle that now has sustained over the course of time. So I've already heard, well, how, how might we include some of these tools in school K, which is really, again, a positive and productive, um, way. The other part that I thought that that I've been thinking about is a, a deeply needed focus here in Rio and perhaps in other places is just student writing. This is a really interesting opportunity to examine what writing is, not using the tools, using the tools to look at what the tools are doing and to really examine the, the writing process, which is such a simple and non-costly thing to do. And it is really at the core of student agency and student success in schools. Most of Rio's students, a huge percentage of Rio's students come from demographic contexts that have not traditionally had success in schools. So more than anything, we want them to be successful, get good grades, get the tests, test scores, so on and so forth. And 
go to college, have be able to go to college, achieve the standard. So in order to achieve those things, any tool, any context that they can understand or that they can learn from towards achieving those things are, is really essential. And I think this is a really interesting time for that. The concerns, again, will be just like any new technology, who will be the winners and the losers? Who and how will we adjust to support the students to be able to do the things that will happen among the already successful students? They will appropriate this tool. They will use this tool to their benefit and to their success. Doesn't mean there might not be some negative parts of that. And, you know, just again, engaging in curriculum and in pedagogy that is about what's going on now in their lives, in the moment, that, that is the strongest um, potential that I see with this technology or any other technology. There's also many things that we have had that are antecedents to this, particularly in students with exceptional needs. We've, we've used tools that are very similar uh, just one comes in mind, co-writer or whatever, where there's like writing support for students. Because one of the most profound things that you will see, a delta that you will see, you know, I, I stay engaged with kids, teaching kids all the time. One of the most profound things that you will see, a big difference is that vast majority of students have deep, complex and fascinating things in their head that they can say out of their mouth. And I often just say, now our mission is to get it to come down your arm and out of your pen or onto the things. And then putting that into a structure of language, we sometimes struggle with certain kinds of students and students to get them to do that, even at the, the basic levels of demand. And it, but it has nothing to do with the initial parts of the writing process. So I think there's great and interesting potentials for that. And, and maybe this is the bridge that when Josh and I are too old and our kids and now my grandkids are going on, I've always been saying eventually, what, where is reading going? Where is writing going? If you can just say it out of your mouth, which you can. Now this is a whole next level. You know, it is a whole next level of production, but it is production. I mean, some of the things that you've talked about, it can be a great tool for helping you to do routine writing, for example, when you've got announcements about different things that go out, uh, it can give you a really good starting point, some really good language to start with, and then you can personalize it and, uh, and work through it. So we've experimented with that here in our offices, writing some of those pieces. I think we have not scratch the surface of the potential that, that these tools have at this point. Are you changing any of your techniques for grading students and the types of assignments being used in the classroom in your school district? I don't know that we have yet. I think we've made some shifts within the, the district, especially at the high school level in the last uh, really couple of years to, to focus grading practices on more of a true kind of standards-based measure, meaning, you know, less emphasis in the grade on the practice element, more emphasis in the grade on the true demonstration of deep learning. And, and I think that shift kind of aligns itself to the, the use of, of technology. So I think if there's less emphasis in the grade on the practice elements, then you know it, it probably aligns itself to maybe less concern in how you know AI is being used to complete sort of daily you know homework assignments, right? Some of the practice elements, the brainstorm elements, can still incorporate. So I don't anticipate that there are uh, immediate major modifications in grading because I think you know s some of that kind of realignment is already in progress and. We'll just have to continue to get tweaked or, you know, kind of re realigned to continue to be reflective of some of the tools that are available to kids. I am sure that is beginning to happen in an ad hoc way, but we will in this coming year begin to monitor and 
listen to the the folks, the students and teachers who are engaging with this, and then we'll develop policy in an organic way that addresses that. I'm sure the middle school teachers will have something to say about that, but um, I, I look forward to seeing how that develops. And also we're, we're in a network of, you know, this in California, the California School Boards Association, so policy, it'll be slow. Policy will develop over time. Most of the time though, unfortunately, it, it will, it will relate to litigious or other types of factors. But I think those also present some fascinating opportunities for us to say, what are we valuing when we're grading, when we're doing the work? So it's just a great opportunity for us to be reflective and hopefully to help students and groups of students who, without chat GPT, we've done less well with, hopefully we'll be able to use this tool to help do better for them. Oh, I think that's something that uh, we're going to have to have some continued conversations about uh, going into the new year. Yeah, we, we have not figured that one out yet. Thanks for listening to our SmartSocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This was our district talk segment where we interview school district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday launch into their future by shining online. This episode was brought to you by our SmartSocial.com VIP program. It's called the Very Informed Parent Program, which helps you engage your students with teen-led video lessons. Stay one step ahead with our premium parent newsletter and discover hidden features on trending apps on teens' phones and our 54-plus live parent and student-friendly events every single year. You can click on the link below to chat with one of our team members if you want a free pass to our VIP program to support your community with our smartsocial.com resources. And if you're a district leader who has a success story, we would love to feature you on a future episode. You can click the links below to reach out. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Have a great day.